crazy. People are wanting them to put in like 4K and like HDR and stuff, but like honestly, I mean, like the game is technically, I think, a bit cell shaded, right? So it doesn't really, People doesn't really matter. Oh, here we go. Alan, grotesque. As it's Let me know if that's too loud for you guys. I can turn it down. Let us speak of the old vulture's last grasp at power. The tournament for the throne. So, summing up, our first trial is to slay a monster. Sounds like we've lost a few candidates already, too. Poor bastards went after something too nasty for their headhunt. A land full of feral humans, with people either running or going mad. What do we believe in, really? You lot! Enemy attack! Hitting us while we're asleep is dirty fighting! Oh! Oh my god! Th bro, they're not even doing... They're like, you can, I know you can pick and choose when you want to do turn base, but like, whoa. You're in this race to become king, are you? Not exactly. I treat all tribes equally. That music is so good. Each ally of a different tribe. Fascinating. <laughs> what? <laughs> they have like the generic little like standing T pose little thing that they do. That's so funny. They always lead the people astray. This place, it isn't a utopia. If that's the real world, then it can die alongside you. I will not let you die in vain. What? He'll be sent in all Bro, I'm so confused right now. Gallows, not just us, but any innocent folks he doesn't find useful. It is a new dawn, and its light shines upon Lord Luis's king. Oh my god. <laughs> what? Luis's outcome is beyond your meddling now. I must clear my head of these fantasies. In the end, clinging to a dream will do me no good. Oh my, the hair, this, what the heck? I shall claim the ideals you abandoned and finish it in your stead. Oh, literally, oh my god. That's peak. That was peak. Eek. Is that uh? Is that October? Is that October? Hold on, my brain not my brain's <laughs> my brain's not working. Ten eleven, October, November, December, October, October eleventh. Oh my god. Bro, what? Hello everyone, I'm Katsura Hashino, the director of this title. For those that may not know me, I've worked on titles such as Shin Megami Tensei 3, Persona 3, Persona 4, and Persona 5, among others. Our program today is about Alice's upcoming RPG, Metaphor, to share the latest information with you. As we announced in the trailer earlier, the release date is confirmed. Manzi's water, the my throat is The entire team is grateful for the positive feedback we've received since the announcement. But for some of you, perhaps this is the first time you're seeing. Bro, I've been before. waiting literally is like. Is it has it been like seven not fucking only the years? Team, but seven fucking years since they fucking announced this shit. This shit is fucking insane. RPG. With this team, we decided to challenge the fantasy genre, aiming to create so a for, game we for can those call of you who don't know. RPGs. I know they're gonna jump into this in a second, not only but for those of you that fans, don't know, those who have this game is supposed to be the third RPG main stain pillar the world for Atlas. This game so this is supposed to be like the next Today, we'd like variation of like Shin Megami Tensei as well as uh, Persona. As I talk over while playing the game. Okay, let's 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 let this check man cook. Please check out the Atlas YouTube channel for more information <laughs> that will come further down the line. We'd love your support. Please subscribe. Yo, you bitches better subscribe to Atlas' channel, bro. Playing, let me introduce the premise of the story. In this game, you'll be forging bonds to support your claim for the throne. But it's the unique take on this that we hope puts a spin on the classic tale. In a kingdom thrown into chaos by the king's assassination, a royal magic is triggered that establishes an election. This magic allows any individual of any social status to become the next king by gaining the people's support. 
which sets a battle for the throne in motion. The protagonist gets involved, and the journey will take him around the world. It's a journey that I hope you enjoy, as it's unique to this game. You'll meet various allies of different tribes, rivals who stand by their own ideologies, and terrifying monsters called interesting. humans will stand in your way. The story's I'm sorry, with what? fateful encounters like this. <laughs> I'm sorry, Above what? all else, a game offers a different experience than a movie or novel. Oh, no. So to prevent this from becoming just a vehicle for our tale, we've gone to great lengths to flesh out the experience into an exciting, fully fleshed game. There's lots to be excited about, so I hope I... you'll stay with us oh, till the end. Oh, no. The implications of that are so fucked, especially if started, it's still connected we? to SMT and Persona's timelines. The title's logo design is based on the concept of a city's main street. It conveys oh. our hope that players will enjoy a journey through a world full of diverse tribes. That's cool. If you don't I like mind, that. Let's start at the beginning. That is that the intro start screen? What the what makes Metaphor different from other fantasy RPGs is the perspective of their world in which our world is their fantasy. After players enter their name, they must answer the questions. Is fantasy limited to the confines of imagination? Would you call it a powerless creation? The game questions the power of fantasy, a power we all possess. I hope the game helps you arrive to your own conclusions. <gasps> Is that how they get you to start the game? That's like the, the like, do you adhere to the, to to the, the guidelines who has been question? Cursed. That's fucked up. This is a scene from the beginning of the game. What differentiates this from previous Galaga! Atlas RPGs wow, is that we've added a more dynamic <laughs> sense of action. The turn-based battles Atlas are still is a central name. to the combat, That's what the comments are but saying. we've incorporated real-time attacking <laughs> and dodging elements as well as dashing around and analyzing to keep things exciting. At the beginning of the game, the protagonist isn't strong yet. So the difficulty of the battles is intentionally pretty high in this area. That said, there are multiple difficulty levels and convenience factors to make things easier. So we hope anyone who wants to play can enjoy it. I can at least cast my usual spell for you. In this scene, our fairy companion casts a musical spell. The music you hear in game is in the protagonist's head. It's in the protagonist's the head. The music is what? Meguro. People probably Bro, know him from what? the Persona series, but I've asked him not to be constrained by his trademark pop style and to take on the challenge of creating a totally new oh sound to fit this game's uh, world. <laughs> we hope you'll look forward to hearing it. This is a particularly large area in the game, and you can see hordes of enemies ahead. One exciting aspect Bro, of this is game is bonkers. that you can decide which what enemies to fight and how to deal with them. Yeah, did you did you see but where they I'll said that the music is playing later. in the fucking protagonist's First, fucking head? Let's take a walk around a like, city. what the fuck is that? <laughs> like, that shit is <laughs> fucking ridiculous. This is the first stop on our journey, the Royal Capital Grand Trad. The background art was designed by Koda Kazuma. <gasps> Koda Kazuma. He sounds familiar. With. The dynamic architecture comes artists. to life I'll with a unique sense later. of realism in medieval painting like shaders. So I hope you enjoy taking it in. Here we are at the city entrance, and you probably noticed the massive armored vehicle. The protagonist That's... will ride around in this to travel the world. The original designs of these vehicles were created by Ikuto Yamashita. They were talking about this earlier, but I don't remember what I'll the vehicle's called. I'll get into the journey aspect in a little bit, so let's walk around the city a bit more. Using magic, you can ride around on your sword to get from one place to another quickly. I wouldn't define this game as being open world, but we took care to flesh out even the distant backgrounds so you can feel the unique atmosphere of every location. Now we're heading toward an alley. The atmosphere changes a lot from the main street. This is where executions happen. That's not something you see very often in modern day stories. Bro, what the fuck? You'll also note some people cowering in the streets because this world has a prevalent gap between rich and poor. As for our protagonist, he's a boy from an inferior tribe. 
abhorred by others. I feel like the actual Despite background social standing, for the way the story is, it's like, it's like medieval tournament. times or like something like that is what it really feels like. You'll find many problems in each town you visit. And of course, people will need your help. His interactions Bro, they're out here literally killing people, like executing them, and like brought daylight every day. Like that's literally, that's literally medieval times. Let's check out the town map. You can see where you're currently located, and then instantly that's move a good town map. Let's fucking go. Visited. This should help make the journey more comfortable. Let's zoom out to the map of the entire kingdom. This is the royal capital where we are now. In this world, the areas between cities are dangerous areas referred to as wastelands, which makes travel difficult, unlike our world today. As the story progresses, your main hub moves from city to city. And with that, let's take a look at a new city. This is Martyra, a town we're unveiling for the first time. It's a pastoral town, quite a contrast from the capital. It may be normal in other fantasy RPGs, but through these acts of traveling and staying at new places, I hope you get a true sense of being on a journey, which is a difficult thing to convey in modern day stories. Oh my god, By Daddy! Barton is Daddy, bro. Life into traveling, we've made <gasps> Do they all have artwork? As real as possible oh, never mind. Game. You'll encounter all sorts of things on the road, so uh, please I look forward down real to how the story well, unfolds. You're in an FF dungeon? Yeah, no worries, no worries. Let's drop in at the recruitment center in this city. What? Here you take requests to fight dangerous monsters. Okay, love that. These threats to the city are called bounties. Oh my god, did you... I don't know nice if you were here earlier, Isla. Encourages um, you to challenge them. The main really enemy type, what the monsters are called, that you have to fight in the offer. game. They're called humans. This is the weapon. They're literally shop. just straight up fucking Each humans. That's fucking insane. And in this game, like, your choice of <laughs> like equipment what is the actual important. fuck, bro? In metaphor, we wanted to give you the freedom to customize yeah, your Yeah, you missed it. You missed it earlier. It was so, so it was fucking wild. They're like, they're like, yeah, like the main. Preparations to explore so what the fuck are you? I don't style. fucking know. But um, it's it's really fucked up Let's to me. I'm gonna talk about it later because I feel like there are connections here. to Persona, Informants like in terms of the actual storyline. But I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about strategies. it after. Even collecting information like this is something we put a lot of thought into making enjoyable. The back of the tavern is actually an inn. Visiting a new town and staying at a new inn. Oh, you can go to the back of the, the tavern. Traveling, isn't it? Sleep. Oh. There's so much to do in these cities and towns that I can't cover it all. So stay tuned for further announcements. Moving on, let's hop into the Gauntlet Runner and head to the battlefield. Okay, that's what it was called. The uh, the Gauntlet Runner the is Gauntlet the vehicle. Runner is a vehicle that can travel safely across Is the wastelands. game even modern though? A mobile no, 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 no. Base, no, I will, mean like um, movement and so, so basically there's like a bunch of stuff story-wise so that happens in SMT, and many others travel in which I believe sort of leads into Persona or like helps like establish the Persona universe if that makes sense. It's like a timeline thing. I this think personally war room. that Persona, if you in a way, in the very first Persona, here, can like lead into this game. But I'm gonna have to talk about it after, because I wanna, opens. I wanna focus on this just for now. Most but I'll, I'll talk about it after. Don't have a time limit on the adventure, but metaphor revolves around the concept of dates and time. For people today, travel often has a fixed itinerary. Yeah, such Persona, as Persona One. Um, I'll get into it, but there's so a thing called, game, I believe, the Deva system the or something with um, that they use, of activities and, structure. and it's like, but it's, that, for me, like, I mean, like, I thought about it a little bit, and I was like, I looked into it, and like, I feel like it's like, um, a possible way that this game is connected to, to, like, Persona and SMT, Here we so, have the list of I'll talk about, I'll talk about it after, though. Three and five are a separate universe. You have a I have no idea. All I, all I know is that they're technically at each they're supposedly supposed to be a part of the same but universe or something. Play an but um, role in the story too. I mean, what makes you think that three and five some are technically separate though? Was it just like because they don't talk about some of the While events in, may offer in one and two? Equipment. The order in which you take on these quests YouTube will put me have on a slow. great impact on how difficult <laughs> they don't the battles want me talking feel. On, on YouTube anymore. So They're over which me. Which challenges you take on first will play a big factor in your experience. Now let's pick a destination okay. and head out. So I guess they're giving you the option to choose what series of quest lines you want to do okay, we to continue departed. the story. So I guess it's going to change how games, you see the story you and experience instantly. the game. 
But here you're inside the runner, heading toward it. Imagine, oh my god, the screen shape, bro. A camper with your <laughs> it's a little companions. too good. Cooking. How many people are gonna get fucking motion camping, sickness playing this game? That's actually fucking wild. We want you to have a realistic traveling experience, so we designed the game to reflect that. This is the kitchen. You can cook Bruh. the ingredients oh you've god. gathered with your friends to make valuable items. In the back is the common room. Looks like nobody's here right now. This is like a very, it has a very like old school military feel. Do you like see the way There's that like all the rooms are? That's really cool. Read. It makes me or think that like we're in like a anything, military base almost. Here. As you can see, we have Japanese bro, style the tubes. capsule shaped beds. The yeah, the capsule, tu the capsule shaped beds, the bro. Runner's interior is <laughs> oh my God. spacious and even has its own engine room. Here's a washing machine and you'll find cleaning supplies too. I hope you're excited to learn more about how they play into things. You're not limited to staying inside the gauntlet runner. If you climb up the ladder to the deck, you can see it moving through this massive world. You can even see monsters soaring overhead. The gauntlet runner has so much to do as you head to your next stop that it's impossible to tell you it all here. So please stay tuned. Merely a trap. Once you've prepared in the runner or a city, you'll arrive in a dungeon. Here's an introduction to the combat system, which is critical to making progress. This is the entrance to a certain dungeon. Let's check the main menu before we head in. Here we have features like items, skills, and equipment. You can see that the UI has always been one of our strong suits. It's something that we were oh, very particular yeah, about. Let's fucking go. You often spend a lot of time navigating menus in RPGs, so we wanted to give players a beautiful interface to enjoy a stronger sense of immersion. Let's check out the party customization screen. The key to strengthening a party and metaphor lies in the job system, and the growth of these jobs is critical to advancing through the game. In Metaphor, the power of these jobs is called archetypes. Archetypes are a very important element to this game, which I'll give you a few more details on. I mean, they're not they're not actually personas, but like they're By confronting um, their anxiety. It reminds the me of like digital. Yeah, they're like jobs, but they, it reminds power. me of Digital think Devil of Saga, where you have the different. Um, everyone possesses. I think they're like the karma systems, or like the mantra. I think it's like the mantra system, the game. where you're basically Examples putting on that show up what specifically you want to like. Seeker. You want to specialize in, battle. and you can like learn abilities and like spells. Who strikes weaknesses with offensive magic. <gasps> and the oh my, okay, maybe, mm. who can plunder resources. <laughs> but the I don't know, man. That kind of looks like a persona, though. I, uh, speaking of DDG, yeah. Taking on the appearance of various heroic figures, and then use their skills to fight. Let's Hero enter the dungeon souls. and take a look at what kind of combat is possible. New skills. I'm actually getting Once DD, you enter geez, the dungeon, the fucking use your feelings right now. This shit is fucking bonkers, bro. Your Persona 6 theme reminds you. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> like the green, the green sort of theme or something. Yeah. Enemies. I'm and really that, excited. I mean, how strong they are. Watch them. Watch them see, also announce because apparently there's three. Blue, there's three games rank, that they're working on. Weaker enemies. Um, watch one of them be one like the a remake or remaster of Digital Devil Saga. To make the game as fast watch. And watch that shit. As I, I I have a feeling that one one day they will do it, especially now. Tedious um, and slow -paced now that they've enemy done Persona 3 Reload, game's rhythm, I'm pretty sure. Especially if you know you can win against weaker enemies. Now you'll notice we have a large monster ahead. They are, they are. I, I really want to fucking get rem uh, remix of them. Glow. But you know what though? If they're gonna remake them, they have if to the also look into remaking um, the Rhino games, you approach the, the, the Devil Summoner games. Four. Those were really good too. Call your party members to your side. Transitioning Pressing us a into a turn-based battle. Okay. So yeah, this, they were showing this if earlier. You a There's a really the smooth real-time combat system that they have, but like if the enemy like is that. too strong, Even you can do turn-based. So like you can have really quick battles, or if you skills, have to, you can switch over to turn-based. Is designed to provide a tactical element with mechanics that can lead to both advantages you really and want devils yeah devil survivor 2 yeah no me too i saw you, you i saw you playing i saw you playing devil summoner earlier without even drawing close 
and use a variety everywhere. of Welcome. skills and strategic actions. The is that a chimera, bro? What is the heck? Flexible and That's a scorpion tail. So we encourage you to create You'll be on your own unique and powerful turn -based. party. Honestly, if the music's good, if it's really good, I'll be on permanent turn base too. Let's go. As you can see, you can earn bonus rewards by defeating all Ooh. enemies without taking any damage. Chair well, hold on. No, hold on. That's say chariot we white mask, this feature bro? to provide a sense of Bruh. accomplishment in party customization. We we're also fighting. So I suggest you try the it. The arcanas too. So it's like the humans are based so off of the arcanas as well. Action elements what? and the strategic nature of the turn-based battles. Also, am I am I too loud or is the or is the, to enjoy, the stream too so loud? Let me know if I need to balance anything because I feel like I have to yell into my mic because this shit is so loud for me. Next, I'd like to touch on the volume of dungeons. As you it's progress okay, through perfect. the story, you'll come across main dungeons, which you'll tackle as part of the main story, and side dungeons, which you can explore as part of quests. Both Ooh, types okay. will of course plunge you into battle. In terms of the number so of getting, dungeons I'm getting to a very, challenge, it's more than yeah, any previous time of Koro no, Koro no Kiseki, or whatever, it's like the new trails, were the trails to avoid of impacting the balance and pacing, dawn, reducing anything or daylight or something, you. I can't remember what it's called. The battle system um, in these dungeons is one of our strongest If it's loud for you, maybe points. turn video down and raise your volume. So we hope no, you no, it's enjoy okay. It. It's okay. I just feel like I have to raise my voice in general, just because I, I have As like I have it loud enough for me. One area we focused on was how <gasps> oh my God, bunny time girl, on the Ila, road Ila. impacted <laughs> look, the growth her. of your party members. Or is that a bunny girl? No, that's a fox girl. One is of that the a systems pink fox that girl, bro? This is the follower system. Bruh. Katharina. The protagonist will meet and what? befriend various people Wait, hold over on. his what? journey. As he continues that's a Catherine to deepen these bonds, that's a Catherine reference. these followers will become his strongest supporters. Seeing oh my God, bro. Through these interactions, Wait, what's happening? What's happening? The what happened to my thing? Become his strongest <gasps> supporters. What? Hello? The fuck? Interaction. I'm not doing anything. The protagonist senses Bruh. the heroic image within them. Okay, we're good. We're good. Giving we're good. him access to that was new fucking weird. archetypes in battle that awaken within him. The entire the entire it's page force reloaded. It's fine. We're good. Which followers to prioritize interacting with? The brawler archetype, bro. She's gonna fucking punch your ass, bro. She's gonna fucking fist Finding you. Finding strategies to gain advantage both in dungeons Wait, hold on. and outside of them is a unique aspect of oh, this game. Oh, how many game. are there? I think there was like 12. There was we like 10 or 12 different that. archetypes or something, at least. There's more to share one... about archetypes. Yeah, you're going for it now? But yeah. But we'll save that for future announcements. I'll just say for now that there's a significant number of them in the game. Furthermore, your other party members can also equip any Bro, type of Bro, this shit is fucking ridiculous. Like, you look at this shit. Informing your party. Take a look. I'll show you on screen. Also, Here's I'm getting, I'm getting such heavy, like, Stella Deus vibes. That Unique was like an old PS2 like um, tactical so game that Atlas made, and like the designs it. were very Metaphor similar in terms of like how, the goal of how um, the idea of a I can't remember what the name of the character designer is, but like Persona and like SMT, like this is all very like and a taste of the story reminding me of Stella Deus right today. now. Into a single game experience. Bro, the fact that like the eyeball so the is the fucking releases, transition to the end game or the um these the, the battle end the screen process. is fucking wild. That shit is crazy. What did you think? That was only scratching the surface of the but journey. You, know, you better not the be done. Of the game system. There's so much more we can't wait to share. Metaphor is a massive game filled with interesting and unique elements. As for the narrative, I only touched on the beginning of the story. But the surprising twists and turns we're known for await you. Oh, I no. hope you're looking forward to hearing more about the story and characters oh, no. that make this game truly special. Okay, well. In addition, we're, starting in more, June, we're hoping to more. give you hands-on demos in various events around the world. The entire development team is working hard to get the game ready for release, so please stay tuned. I should also mention we're opening pre-orders today, so don't miss out. In addition to the standard edition, Metaphor is also available in a special physical collector's edition. This year marks 35 years since Atlas released its first game, and Metaphor serves as the 35th anniversary commemoration title for the Atlas brand. I might actually have to fucking get that. That shit looks so it's fucking a celebration good. Title, and we're very excited to get this game into your hands. So we hope you check it out when it launches. 
Before I sign off, I have a short video we prepared for those of you who stuck with us to the end. Is it actually this over? This is a scene from the what? Gauntlet Runner, which I spoke Bro. about earlier. I'm so sad. Please look forward to the all-new RPG from Atlas, Metaphor. Thank you very much for your time today. Oh my lord. Okay, we're camping. <gasps> oh no, are we taking a bath? <laughs> oh no. What? Please tell me that's not it. Oh my god! Um, the thing with the actual story with Metaphor that I think is going to be connected to Persona and SMT, because like, let's be completely fucking honest, if it's going to be a third mainline pillar, it wouldn't be surprising to me if they find a way to, to have like a story connection because of the way that like the story background is. So, apparently we're fighting humans. That is the main enemy type that we're fighting, and they all have archetypes. Um, the way that SMT and Persona did it is that they were based on alternate timelines, kind of. Like, SMT is post-apocalyptic. Um, Persona is... Persona is very, like, um, more like if things didn't go to shit, but we still have issues, you know what I mean? Like, we still have to deal with shadows, you know what I mean? So, so the thing is, the thing is, is that if metaphor is going to kind of tie into something to do with real, the real world, my guess, and I, I I'm probably wrong because like, let's be honest, like I never really, I never really hit <laughs> when it comes to that stuff. Um, the way that it's probably going to work is that metaphor will be, be connected through persona. And the reason that I think that is because Persona 1, or Persona Revelations, I, oh, I, that's crazy how I already had that looked up a while back. Um, so there is something called the, the Deva system. I know you're like in and out of work or whatever, so like I'm just going to assume that you're <laughs> you're still technically slightly paying attention. But basically this thing here... Um, I believe that this was created by Sebek in the original Persona spinoff. Um, and so what this is, it is a machine. I can literally highlight this shit here. It's called the um, the Dimension Variable Accelerator System. Um, it is a machine designed to create a special space, allowing for the matter within it to shift into special forms. This is how, from what I remember in Persona 1, a lot of really weird fuckery started hap uh, happening. But in Persona 1, in the normal timeline, they managed to stop it from really doing anything um, super crazy. Besides, like, I think, um, like, I mean, like, some of the events in Persona 1. Um, my theory is that this machine may, in another timeline, may have accidentally created the timeline for Metaphor to exist. So that's my theory. I, I'm genuinely, genuinely hoping that they do at least find a way to connect the games. Um, even if it's just literally like a blanket connection, like it doesn't even have to be like a, uh, like a direct connection. Because I mean, like at the end of the day, like it's its, its own separate game, right? But, um, but yeah, I kind of want to reread through this just like another second or whatever. Um, so from what I remember... Um, a lot of the anime designs apparently are based on paintings and, like, artwork from real life, which is very weird, by the way. So we have whatever the fuck this thing is. There... He has he has wings for ears. You're out now, so you're full attention. Okay, I was going to say, this monster has wings for ears, and it has tongues. It has tongues coming out of the of, of the wings. It's like got mouths on its on its wings, and then there's like I don't know what the fuck this is. Is it like a whip or something? There's like something going around the monster here. Um, and then there's like I think it's like almost like apples or like 
or something is like sprouting out from like the vine that's like around it. That shit is fucking bonkers, bro. Um, I can't I can't really tell what's going on here. I think there's a person here. People, yeah, there's people running to go fight it. Bro, that shit looking fucking dank. It's got three fucking legs, bro. Bro, what the fuck? Yo, this shit is fucking wild. Oh my god. Okay. Ah, oh, here we go. This is this is apparently based off of a fucking painting. This shit is fucking crazy. Let's go back a little bit. I want to catch like a full body a full body image of this. Bruh. Look at this, bro. There, there's there's a fucking it's like an egg, bro. It's got like barrels, barrels inside the bottom of the egg that's cracked open. Um, his face is like peeling off. And then there's like a woman, I think it's like a woman's eye there. Um, the shit on the top, I'm pretty sure it's based off of like an actual painting too. That shit is fucking bonkers. Ooh. Oh, okay, let's take a look at this. Uh, requests and tactics, check status. So this is kind of like the main, the main hub area, I mean like that. The route map. I'm guessing this decides where your destination is going to be. Days until departure from Mar from Martira. That's interesting. So they still have like a timeline that you have to adhere to, I think. But it's like, it's a little vague. I guess like it's one of those things you're going, you're going from, you're probably going from city to city. And you're basically asking people to vote for you. You're trying to like get people to like believe that you're the one that they want to vote for to become the next king. So, summing up, Ooh. our first trial is to slay a monster. The abandoned tomb, built in, Martyr built in Martyra's golden era by a noble to honor his family. After its desecration by grave robbers, monsters came and now people revile it. Interesting. By a noble. So it's just a random noble. I wonder if they'll go into the backstory for that. Triangle strategy vibes. Fuck yeah. Oh my god, someone's commenting. They're going, pss, pss, riding a sword. Looks like somebody wants attention. Oh my god. Sorry, I gotta snip that. We gotta snip all the things, bro. Okay. Already too. Poor bastards went after something uh, okay, there's there's the um the board here. Oh my god, what? Look at that fucking tongue. Why does everything... You know what's so fucking weird? You know what's so fucking weird? All of, a lot of these monster designs, they include... They include tongues. They include teeth. Like, it's almost like... I, it really feels like... I, I guess they're... I guess they're based off paintings, I think. But, like, I need to see more. I genuinely think that the original humans have mutated into monsters. That's not even, like, the most surprising fucking plot twist I can think of, but that's literally, like, what it feels like. It feels like the original humans in this world have mutated or been transformed into, like, otherworldly creatures or, like, some weird shit. I can't believe that they call them humans. That's the main enemy name for them. They actually call the main enemy type humans. That shit is fucking ridiculous. Humans with people I don't run this is the part. This is the part, Isla. If you're here, if you're listening. Feral humans. Feral humans. Like, what? What do we believe in, really? Oh my God, furries. We love that. <laughs> He's peeking out of the bed. Oh my God, what the fuck? What's the name of that? I want. I want to see the name. Departure from Virga Island. See, that's another area you're going to have to go to. You're going to have to uh, ask for them to vote for you. Not exactly. Oh, hold on, hold on. I want to see that. Give me one sec. There was, um, they had like the actual skills and stuff there. Um, okay, so you're a mage there. It was this one. So you have, you have an actual weapon. You have armor. They give you gear. Um, I don't know if they give you the ability to like actually do like outfits and stuff, but like I mean, like it is what it is. 
and treat all tribes equally. Each ally Bro, that shit is fucking ally. wild. It really reminds me of like the Trails series, the new one that they have out. Like the way that you can like do like real time Fear combat. They always lead the people or, uh... This place. It so they're there are they using things like personas and demons? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. Like if we go back, like I'll go back again. Um, also, I wanted to point out. I thought it was really funny. So the way the way that they're doing it, you know how personas are like essentially like masks or something is what the Persona series wants us to to kind of like view like them using them as or whatever. Um, so this is essentially using actual archetypes. So like I guess like it's not the actual persona itself, but it's like the actual arcana slash archetype that it represents. So like. Like being a good person, being a healer, being a warrior, um, being someone who defends others, they're taking those those like tropes and they're letting the player use them in like gameplay mechanic. Kind of the same way as a persona would be, basically. Yeah. Um look Jesus. Oh oh we didn't see this before. Okay, so so this apparently so the mage, oh my god, bro, these are literally fucking personas, bro. This shit is wild. Um, using fire, ice, and electric magic, it excels at hitting enemies' weak points. Um, it's strong against ice. We have, wow, that's crazy. That's crazy. We have literally everything that Persona 3 has. <laughs> bro, this is literally Persona 3. Let's fucking go. Um, yeah, I've got Slash, Pierce, Bash. And then we have all the elements from Persona 3 that they used. I think that they had um I think they had those in Persona 4 too. I could I think I think they did, right? Um And then we have strength, magic, endurance, agility, and luck. Literally, it's the same fucking game. I back when you said that you were like, oh, I don't know if I want to buy this, bro. Like, this is literally all I need to see, and I know that I want to buy it. Like, this is literally just another persona game. Like, let's fucking go. <laughs> like, oh my gosh. Apparently you can rank it up to I think rank 20. That's interesting. Literally all the personas, yes. I'm gonna show you something, hold on. Um, when they show the other menu here. Okay, so they're gonna go to party. Look at the fucking way the party members uh, are, are here. Just give it a second. Do you see this? The way that they're standing here, it's literally just a fucking profile. Like a T-pose profile. Like, this shit is fucking bonkers. <laughs> it's so weird. They're just standing. They're just standing like that. Except Persona Four didn't have physical. Didn't have physical attacks. What the fuck? What are you talking about? Persona, yeah, Persona Five had physical attacks. Are you talking? Are you talking about Persona? Persona? Wait, Persona? Persona Four? Or Persona Five? Oh, didn't have different different physical attacks. Sorry, brain. I know what you're talking about. I do remember. Oh, that cut in. Oof. Stone in. This place, it isn't a utopia. If that's the real world, then it can. I have a feeling that they're gonna they're gonna give um the main character more dialogue options and like let them actually talk a bit more. Oh my god, bro. What the hell? This shit here, chariot white mask. This shit is fucking bonkers to me, bro. Oh my god, it's like it's literally like they just took Persona and SMT and were like, "Here you go. Here's the next. <laughs> Here's another game. Here you go." God damn. Oh no no no! I want to see that. I want to see. I want to see. What did it say? So this is this is so weird to me. The royal funeral draws even closer. Five days remain. I guess the way that they do their calendar switching, persona and listening to fire Emblem setting laugh my fucking ass off. Well, that's literally that's literally Tokyo Mirage, right? That was literally Tokyo Mirage sessions. But any innocent folks, bruh. 
Oh, they have the they have the press turn. Did you see that? Oh, that did you see that by the way? They have press turn. Don't know if you noticed that. There is a press turn system in here from from SMT. Races to the gallows, not just us, but any innocent. Look at that. We have a nice little press press turn system at the top here. <laughs> Let's fucking go. I feel you. Find it is a new dawn, and its light shines upon Lord oh, fuck. <gasps> Necromancer, bruh. This man's riding on his fucking greatsword. That shit is bonkers. I must clear my head of these fantasies. In the end, clinging to a dream will do me no good. Now, I didn't realize I stabbed her. I shall claim the, the ideals you abandoned and finish it in your stead. Bro. Oh my god. I'm so fucking hyped. All right, Before here we go. Playing, They're going to show a lot of information, and I'm going to tear it apart. I'm going to tear it In apart. Let's game, go. You'll be forging bonds to support your claim for the throne. But it's the unique take on this that we hope puts a spin on the classic tale. In a kingdom thrown into chaos by the king's assassination, a royal magic is triggered that establishes an election. This magic allows any individual of any social status to become the next king by gaining the people's support. <laughs> which sets a battle for the throne in motion. I think this the is all footage from before. And the journey will take him around the, the, the moon. The moon it's that they show that earlier. Only saying SMT3 is game. interesting. Yeah, You'll that's that's the thing for me, tribes, is that the fact that they're saying SMT3, like specifically, it makes so much sense to me. Because it's like a lot of the stuff that I'm seeing here, it feels like very reminiscent of Persona 3 and Persona... Sorry, Persona 3 and SMT 3. Than a movie or novel. So to prevent this from becoming just a vehicle for our tale, we've gone to great You know what I'm very to interested to see? Into an they have, um, they There's have the moon, about, so I hope you'll stay with us which is vile. It's a, it's a, what's the word I'm looking for? Let's get started, shall we? I have to pause this for a sec. The, the moon, the moon that they show, um, which like does like the cycles and all that other stuff or whatever, like the same as like the moon in like real life or whatever. Uh, and like the other games um they have it so that it has like faces on it but like i don't understand i want to see how they're going to implement that because i feel like i feel like there's something really fucked up about the moon in this game too because like why why the fuck is the moon literally hovering over the city like that shit is fucked up I need to see more. I could be wrong. I feel like I feel like I saw it hovering over the city in a few gameplay images or something. Logo design is based on the concept of a city's main street. It conveys this is fucking hope. cool. This shit is fucking bonkers, bruh. Look at this. This is the fucking title screen. It's literally you in the middle of the fucking city just standing there, bro. Yeah, they always have they have huge implications throughout the SMT series. That's gonna be another thing here, but I'm I'm so curious to see what it is exactly that they end up doing in this game hope that players will enjoy a journey lots of gameplay and mechanics are held behind it yeah if you don't mind let's start at the beginning <sighs> oh my god let's fucking go um i'm gonna snooze at maybe one more time from other fantasy RPGs. oh oh did you see this part did you see this part isla this part um, this is how they introduce you to the game and like have you create your name. Do you remember how in Persona, Persona Three, I think Persona Three, Four, and Five, or whatever, they have like the thing where like you sign, you like sign your name. This, this is that part. Plus, plus they also have um, they they do like the the thing that Persona Five does, where like you basically say like, oh. I acknowledge that this is fiction. It's not real. This is the scene that they do it for. And the way that they do it here is so fucking cool. It's literally them saying, like, you acknowledge that, like, um, I think it's like you acknowledge that fantasy um, is compelling and, like, is integral to, um, to like, thinking or something. I can't remember. It'll, it'll show. It'll show. Is their fantasy. Okay. Well, no, 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 no. Go back. Go back. <laughs> I want to see that. Hold on. Is the perspective of their world. What do they say? Our world is their fantasy. Pardon my curiosity, but would you tell me your name? That is to say, tell me who you really are. The one who meets my eyes across a strange threshold. After players what enter the fuck? Name, they must answer the questions. Who, who are... Wait, whoa, 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 did it say who will you... 
guide the protagonist? Hold on. Who are you? Okay, who, sh who shall guide the protagonist? What? What? That doesn't make sense. But that's so we're not we're not naming the protagonist. Are we naming or just naming the person like the like the save? After players enter their name or something, must answer the questions. Is fantasy limited to the confines of imagination? <gasps> oh, you oh oh! It said it said you get to name the protagonist later. Players what? Enter their name. They must answer the question. No fucking way, bro. Questions. Where did it is say fantasy that? Your name is Atlas. You will name the protagonist later. Ooh. Ooh, that's so cool. Oh my god. Okay, this is it. This is it. Is fantasy limited to the confines of imagination? Would you call it a powerless creation? So if you say no, it will tell you that you can't continue. But if you say yes, it lets you play the game. The powerless creation. The game questions the power of fantasy, a power we all possess. I hope the game helps you arrive to your So let this tale begin. Bruh. Oh my god. This shit is so good. journey and goal is to save the prince who has been cursed. This is a scene from the beginning of the game. Interesting. So our initial beginning is that we're getting to the city. Atlas RPGs. And then we're getting to the city and we're trying to cure we're trying to cure the prince. From previous I'm thinking that we should find a place where we can see the whole area. Atlas RPGs is that we've added a more dynamic sense of action. Let's go. The turn-based battles are still central to the combat, but we've incorporated real-time attacking and dodging elements, as well as dashing around and analyzing to keep things exciting. At the beginning of the game, the protagonist isn't strong yet, so the difficulty of the battles Sandworm. is intentionally pretty high in this area. We wanted players to get a sense of both tension and accomplishment. I might die if I risk fighting right now, so I'll explore cautiously during this segment. That said, there are multiple difficulty levels and convenience factors to make things easier, so we hope anyone who wants to play can enjoy it. I can at least cast my usual spell for you. In this scene, our fairy companion casts a musical spell. The music you hear in-game is in the protagonist's head. What? The composer behind the music is Shoji Meguro. No, 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 hold on. I didn't catch this. I did not catch this before. Also, I love how they're they're noting they're noting specifically Isla that Shoji Meguro, his notable works are Persona Three, Persona Four, Persona Five, and again, SMT Nocturne. That's crazy. It's almost like they're trying to specifically say that these games are very important. That's crazy. So here's what I want to say, though. Um, this shit is fucking bonkers. Um, so apparently the background music that we're hearing is Galica casting a musical spell on the, on the protagonist. And only he, only him, can hear this music. Which is really fucking weird to me. I don't. I. I am assuming that it's literally like it's like them them memeing and trying to give a reason for why we can hear music or some shit. But for all I fucking know, I. I don't know. That shit is fucking weird. Um, I'm gonna snooze ads one more time, and then after that, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna let them come, or I'm gonna. I'll. I'll let you know when I'm gonna run an ad break because unfortunately, um, Twitch makes me do that. So, it's a tee. I can at least cast my usual spell for you. In this scene, our fairy companion casts right? a musical spell. The music That's... you hear in game is in the protagonist's head. Oh my lord, bro. This is so crazy. Is so what does she say? Music was the first magic this world ever knew after all. Makes the road a little easier. That's so cool. I love that. People probably know him from the Persona series, but I've asked him not to be constrained by his trademark pop style and to take on the challenge of creating a totally new sound. They literally, bro, they asked Shoji Maguro, they asked him, do not restrain yourself to what you've done before. Make an entirely new feel for a soundtrack. That is this game's world. peak. We that is peak. Forward to hearing it. This is a particularly large area in the game. Oh my god. It reminds me of um the the Damasca. Is it a, the, the is that Easter sand or some shit? Which enemies to fight and how to deal with them. 
but I'll explain more about battles later. First, let's take a walk around a city. Hey, oh, we can get Medicinal Herb. I don't remember if that this was an SMT or anything. I don't think it was. Journey, the Royal Capital Grand Trad. The background art was designed by The Koda face Kazuma, in the sky, is that his majesty? What? Thrilled to work with. The dynamic architecture comes to life with a unique sense of realism in medieval Wait, paint. what? The, the concept artist was Ko Koda Kazuma from Nier Automata? Bruh. What the fuck? Dude, this shit is bonkers, bro. What? If you climb up the ladder bro, look to at the this. deck, what the fuck? you can see it moving through this massive world. You can even see monsters soaring overhead. The Gauntlet Runner has so much to do as you head to your next stop that it's impossible to tell you it all here. So please stay tuned. I wonder, I'm the runner very curious to see in a dungeon. Here's an whether or not like they'll the actually system, have it where you can get into like encounters when you're on the gauntlet, the, the gauntlet Runner or whatever. Because like that's fucking crazy. If you can see monsters overhead, I wouldn't be this surprised the if they can attack you. A certain dungeon. A certain dungeon. The, main the Dragon Temple. See, this is a lot of the like stuff items, that I, I, I didn't really get to look into. You can see that the UI has always been one of our strong suits. Oh yeah, we have Mag we too. Very particular about. You often spend a lot of time navigating menus in RPGs, so we wanted to give players a beautiful interface to enjoy a stronger sense of immersion. Oh, ooh, let's take a look. Let's take a look. No, 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 no. Hold on. I want to make sure because we have followers here. RPGs, I want to see what the actual so items look like. A beautiful interface. So we have uh, whatever the fuck that thread is. Medicinal herb, medicine, expensive medicine. They're basically just potions, or like they're just like the regular stuff or whatever. Um, life saving medicine. Restores 300 HP to an ally. You got three of those. How far are they into the game here, though? That's the real question. They already have like, they already have like 350 HP. Where are the other party members? Enjoy stronger sense of immersion. Let's check out the party customization screen. The key to strengthening a party and metaphor lies in the job system, and the growth of these jobs is critical to advancing through the game. In metaphor, the power of these jobs is called archetypes. Yeah, the UI here is fucking bonkers, bro. Archetypes this are shit a very is insane. Element to this game, which... So this this is the other thing. I think I mentioned it earlier because I saw it, but anytime you change your 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 archetype, it gives you elemental uh, weaknesses as well as um, defense as well. I'll give you so a few more I found that really interesting. It's like they literally took this shit from By Persona three anxiety, and four because you can you have um, you have slash strike pierce figures, and then you have possesses. like all the elemental Their stuff, the same stuff from Persona three. The game. That's really cool. I think Examples that's awesome. Of some archetypes that show up early in the game include Ooh, there it was. See, they have um the There's this and then what do they have here? Yeah. They have the actual spell list here. Examples Hold on. Of some Come on, show me that. that. Show up early in the no, no. God damn it, bro. I tried to pause it. Hold on. In very One more time throughout the game. Examples of some archetypes that Okay. So they've changed the name of it to they have s fuck sick like cyclone, I think. They have something like Cyclone or something for Wind Magic, Day for, I'm assuming, Ice Magic, I think. Taru Kaja. Yeah, Cy Psych Cyclo. That's interesting that they've named that. That's actually really cool. Sweeping Slash, Tetra Break. So we have Taru Kaja and Tetra Break, uh, Tetra Break or whatever. That is pretty, pretty on the nose. That show up early in the game include the Seeker, who is an all rounder in battle. The Mage, who's Oh, so the archetype that we're getting is Seeker. That's the one the main character is probably going to get. No, Garu? No. I think it's interesting that they've changed the name for the moves to, like, other ones or whatever. But, like, at the end of the day, I mean, like, it's it's the same shit. They could have literally called it Garu or, like, Garu Dying and all that other stuff or whatever. Who strikes weaknesses with offensive magic. And the thief who can plunder resources with offensive magic. I want to see that. I want to see that. Um, a dark sword, steel. The higher your agility, the higher your success rate. Uh, we have Moodoo, plunder life, plunder magic. Plunder life and plunder magic, I'm pretty sure, are the absorb skills. Yes, we have Moodoo. Apparently, there, apparently we still have Moodoo here. That's, <laughs> that's crazy. You can plunder resources. 
But the key point of the system here is that the character can undergo a transformation, taking on the appearance of various heroic figures and then Wait, use what? their skills to fight. Taking on the appearance of heroic figures? Let's enter the dungeon. Bruh, bruh, this is literally Digital Devil Saga, bro. This is literally Digital Devil. Oh, let's fucking go. Are you ready? They're remaking Digital Devil Isla. I'm telling you right fucking now. And take a look at what kind of combat is possible. New skills? New skills? Once you enter the dungeon, use your fairy companion's power to analyze your surroundings. That music is so good. I'm so ready. This will give you a sort of ranking of nearby If this is their answer, and by that, you're I molding. Mean how strong they are. I mean... As you can Take what see, you can get. Many I mean, <laughs> like, it is blue, what it is. I'm good for whatever. Lower rank. In other words, weaker enemies. One mm -hmm. of the things we kept in mind during development was our goal to make the game as fast-paced and exhilarating as possible. I think, you know what I'm going to do? After we're finished analyzing this, before I start doing something else, Tedious I'm going to show you a video can ruin um, a game's rhythm, of the new Trails you know game, you because I want you to see enemies. what the gameplay system's like, so you see what they're doing here. Because you can attack now, IRL, have a large monster and they ahead. do it the same way that the other one is. The other game does it. More the story is so good. A yeah. Glow. If the analysis indicates they're formidable, you should approach cautiously, unlike before. Pressing the squad button will call Ooh. your party members to your side. <laughs> Transition them smoothly into a The story is battle. so good, I know, I feel you. If you initiate a squad battle before the enemy notices you, you earn a bonus first strike, just like this. Oh, fuck Even yeah. Even battles that require a squad approach to defeat them with skills, mm, the big action damage. portion before it is designed to provide a tactical element with mechanics that can Bro, lead to I both wish, advantages I, and disadvantages. I wish I could get a, an early copy of this game or like just test it out like do like a gameplay test or whatever. Approach, this looks so cool. And using a variety of skills and strategic actions. The party customization is highly flexible and strategic. <laughs> So we encourage you to create your own unique and powerful party. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I gotta hear that. The party customization is highly flexible and strategic. So we encourage you to create your own unique and powerful party. Bro, the battle music, the we battle theme is gonna the be peak. I'm ready. As you can see, you I'm can so earn bonus this. rewards by defeating all enemies without taking any damage. We implemented this feature to provide a sense of accomplishment in party customization. Hell so yeah, I suggest Brian. you try it out. You will, you will be rewarded for so that's for playing the well. Let's fucking go. And the strategic nature of the turn-based battles. It's a battle system with two aspects to enjoy. So we hope you have fun when the game comes out. Next, I'd like to touch on the volume of dungeons. As you progress through the story, you'll come across main dungeons, which you'll tackle as part of the main story, and side dungeons, which you can explore as part of quests. Both types will, of course, plunge you into battle. In terms of Bro, the number what the of fuck? main story, I saw that earlier and, and I didn't know how to register what the fuck it was. As part of it's like a fish with quests. legs. Bro, types will this fish has human legs. Do you see this? Homophios. Of course. That's a fish with motherfucker. Sir, Isla, this fish has a fucking cowboy boot. This, the, it's a, it's a fish with a human leg, and then it has a leg with a cowboy boot. What? What? So you should be able to see this here. Um. Okay, take a look. Take a look. So this here, this is the box art that they have. It looks really good. Don't get me wrong. Um, two things that I want to say though. Um, let me go look here. Um, they have. I'm not gonna move that actually. Like, let's see if I can. Oh, I don't know if I can. So, so here's the thing. So you can't really see it very well, but if you look on the bottom left, do you remember that uh, the fox girl, the girl that you really liked? The pink-haired fox girl, she might be a playable character because she's standing with the protagonists. I could be wrong. I could be wrong, but she might be a playable character. She's standing. Um, she's standing with um some of the key characters that they've shown that were um 
that were shown off as playable. So if they let her be playable, I mean, I'm here for it. Um, the other thing, T is interesting, by the way, since Persona RM. Oh, yeah, yeah, I was going to say, I just, I realized what you were saying now. Yeah, the T for teen, I think is very weird. I think, um, I think that they're, they're trying to make it more, I guess, like, branched out so that more people can play it or something. I don't, I don't fucking know. But the other thing I wanted to note is that they have the, uh, the top here, the character designs. They have, I think that's the prince or something, or it's like someone, it's, it's one of the people. There's, there's the face of the moon there on the right. Then there's the prince with the blonde hair and the horns. And then for some reason, they, for some reason, they have it in the artwork here. They have that guy from the painting because these enemies are based off real life paintings. For some reason, he's in the box art as well as the owl thing with like the tongue. That's kind of bonkers. I think that's really crazy. Also, welcome to whoever just joined. Um, here you can take a look at this weird fish creature with uh, human legs. Um, we're just, we're just taking a look at all the weird designs and all the stuff. Um, I'm gonna quickly after I finish rewatching this again. This time I'm gonna rewatch it one more time, and I'm just gonna quickly see if I catch anything else. But um, it's been pretty wild. Um, Plunge you let's continue battle. that. In terms of the number of dungeons to challenge, it's more than any previous. Did that thing jump out of the water, bro? Furthermore, the what dungeon the mechanics we've designed were These level designs are crazy. Pacing, reducing anything that may bore you. The what did it say? Reducing. Any title of ours. I, need to re I don't want to hear that more time. Both types reducing anything that may bore you. you. Battle. In terms of the number of dungeons to challenge, it's more than any previous title. More of ours. than our previous Furthermore, titles. The dungeon mechanics we've designed. Dungeon were mechanics to avoid impacting the balance and pacing, reducing oh. anything that may bore you. The battle system in these dungeons That's is one of our strongest selling points. So we hope you enjoy it. So they're they're saying that they are so confident, oh babe. They're saying that they are so confident in their dungeon mechanics and their dun their dungeon design that this is actually a main selling point for the game. I'm here for it. Let's fucking go. Also, I am living for this. The main character has actual voice lines. Do you see this? Do you do you see this, Isla? The main character talks. The main character can talk. Earlier in um, the thing, they let you. I think I mentioned it earlier, but they they let you name, they let you name the traveling character, like the the traveling boy, but they also let you name yourself. So I'm pretty sure that the actual main character is gonna have more, uh, more involvement in like actual plot stuff and like probably talk more. Ayo, not in your Atlas games. What? No, let the let the main character talk more. They don't have to talk that much. Just just enough. But, um, why does it look like she got the shit beat out of her, bro? She looks like someone fucking kicked her all over the fucking... Like, look at this. As we created the game, She's... Bro. She is definitely a playable character. She is... She is exuding playable character vibes. You cannot tell me that she doesn't give that. Look at that character design, bro. She looks so fucking good. Yeah, we focused on Ooh. was how spending time on the road impacted the growth of your party members. One of the systems that symbolize this is the follower system. She got that. <laughs> yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. The protagonist will meet and over befriend it. various people over his journey. As he continues, <gasps> what did she say? Hold on, hold on. And... I don't know. I don't know if we'll cross paths again like this. But if you're ever in trouble, I'll be there. She's going to be a playable character. Befriend I'm telling you right system. now. The protagonist will meet and befriend various people over his journey. As he continues to deepen these bonds, these followers will become his strongest supporters. Seeing their way of life through these interactions, the protagonist senses the heroic go. image within them. The loyal hunter Katharina, within her dwells the virtue of the brawler. Giving him Let's fucking go. To new so I, archetypes they're giving us new archetypes then. Oh, oh, okay, I see, I see. It's up to the player to decide which followers to prioritize interacting with. Finding strategies to gain advantage, both in dungeons and outside of them, is a unique aspect of this game. We hope you enjoy them. 
There's more to share about Ooh. archetypes, but we'll save that for future announcements. I'll just Wait, what, what, what was the name? What was the name for that? Hold on. That for I'm going to read that shit right to share about archetypes. Homo, homo, oppo. I don't know what that means. But we'll save. Um, it's it's a human. It's a it's a it's an egg with a human in it, and it has human legs, and it has boots. It has big brown boots. That for That's all I know. Announcement. I'll cut you down. I'll just say for now that there's a significant number of them in the game. Furthermore, your other party members can also equip any type of archetype, giving Ooh. you countless options in forming your party. Take a look. I'll show you on screen. Here's a party consisting only of brawlers. Uh, what? Bro, yo, it's, you can put all of the same character archetype on all of the characters? Whoa. Unique parties like this are fully possible, so we hope you get creative with it. Metaphor has been created with the goal of fusing the idea of a journey with interpersonal interactions, party growth, combat, and a taste of the storyline we've described today into a single game experience. So when the game releases, we hope you'll experience Bro, these aspects to the, the fullest. Fuck? What did you think? That was only scratching the surface of the journey and the basics of the game system. There's so much more we can't wait to share. Metaphor is a massive game filled with interesting and unique elements. Okay, I think that's um that was the last As part of the it there. Let's I only touched on the beginning of the story. But the surprising mm -hmm. twists and turns we're no in characters that make Bro, this game that story the story better be fucking good i'm so fucking excited around the world the entire develop hoping to give you hands-on demos in various events around the world oh they're putting out the demos around the world team is working hard to get the game ready for release so please stay tuned i should also mention we're opening pre-orders today so don't miss out in addition to the standard edition, Metaphor is also available in a special physical collector's edition. This year marks 35 years since Atlas released. Let's take a look at this. So we have, I'm assuming we have pins. We have a sound, we have two soundtrack discs. Um, I think some stickers there. We have an art book. We have the game. We have the actual collector's box that comes in. We have the steel box as well. Um, it comes with a map. I believe that's a map of the world. That map looked kind of fucking wild. What the fuck? Um, huh? <gasps> oh my god, I didn't fucking notice that before. What the fuck? Isla, 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 Isla. There's... Oh, does it come with... So there's, there's two extra things. There's costume and battle BGM sets. And they have look at the fucking look at the fucking outfits. We have Persona One, Persona Two, Three, Four, Five, SMT Four, SMT Five, and then uh, what the fuck is that? There's something else there. I don't. I can't tell what that is. Uh, fuck. What is that costume, bro? What? I don't know what that is, but that shit looking fucking fucking bonkers. And there's also the digital all time best soundtrack as well. So I guess they've added like, <gasps> oh my fucking god, bro! They've added like every fucking Atlas game into a fucking collector, a collector's edition thing for the soundtrack. Do you see that? I can't zoom in well enough here, but like it has all the artwork from all the Persona games and SMT. So it's literally an archive of like every fucking. SMT and Persona soundtrack with all the best soundtracks that they've ever uh, ever made for those games on two fucking discs. I might have to buy this. Um, the collector's editions and components and their pre-order availability date will vary per region. I'm going to have to go look later. That's fucking crazy. Um, let me actually see if I can find... I'm going to quickly look this up. Just give me one second. Metaphor... Fantasio Collector's Edition. I'm going to shit. Hold on. Yo. <laughs> ah, 
Oh my god. Uh... Yo, we're peeking right now. We're peeking. I'm actually gonna fucking shit myself right now if I can get this all to go through. I'm ready. Please fucking process. Please process. Please process. I want this so fucking bad. You have no fucking idea. I'm actually... I... <gasps> oh my lord. Uh... <laughs> Let's fucking go. I. It's so rare for me to actually be super interested in getting a collector's edition of something. Like, I just... I just dropped 200 fucking dollars on this bullshit. I'm so fucking excited, you guys. Oh my god. Let's fucking go. <sighs> Bro, what a fucking meme. Okay, I'm coming back. Let me take a look here. I got an... Okay, so I got an email from... I pray for, pray for me. I'm going in with no expectations. <gasps> oh my god. Stop. Okay. I don't know if it's, I don't know if I should talk about this right now. So, I mean, okay. So everyone pray for me because I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure that we're getting a code for a certain in, uh, indie game. Um, and it's kind of a big deal. I'm not going to talk about it any more than that. But um, Isla, like, we're peaking right now. Today's peaking. The metaphor Refantasio stream is peaking. Or I'm 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 ninety percent sure that I might get a code for something. Let's fucking go. Hell fucking yes! I'm so fucking excited. Okay, okay, I'm coming off. I'm coming back to Twitch. Let's fucking go. So let me. I'm just gonna quickly go through one more time. Also, welcome whoever just joined. Y'all, I I am literally peeking right now. I literally, I just put in my pre-order. I just put my pre-order in. I'm so, so excited for this. Um, and I also just got an email from another company. And apparently um, there's something that I've been looking forward to. And apparently they might have some codes. So I'm, I'm ready. Today is so good. Damn, Atlas really, <laughs> Atlas, oh my gosh. We're, uh... Ooh, okay, let me re let me go through this one more time. I'm gonna re rewatch a little bit of it. I'm gonna skim through, just because I want to see if there's anything in particular that I missed. But I'm I'm pretty sure we got everything, Isla. So let's start over one more time. This intro, this whole trailer that they showed here, it was so crazy. I can't believe that they have them on the artwork. Like what the heck? Are they even are they important to the story? Like what is this? The tournament for the throne. So, oh, yeah. oh, oh. our first trial is to slay a monster. Sounds like we've lost a few candidates already too. Poor bastards went after something too nasty for their headhunt. A land full of feral humans with people either running or going mad. What do we believe? Oh, I you know, I missed that. I missed that. Let's that's something I want to see. What was that? Uh, what the fuck was that? Hold on. I know that this monster had teeth. Bro. This island, this shit has legs. This shit has legs on it, bro. What the fuck is this? A land full of feral humans. Oh my god. Either running or going mad. What do we believe? That was what I missed. I forgot I missed it. So the weapons, the weapons. Um, okay, so they actually straight up tell you if they do slash and other stuff. That's cool. I mean, like, obviously it's a sword, so. Hunter's crossbow. Interesting. What do we believe in? Really? Is that the crit? Ooh. Race to become king, are you? Not exactly. I treat all tribes equally. When are they gonna? <laughs> when are they gonna put out the actual soundtrack for the battle theme? I want it like, I want it like completely clean. I want to hear it. Fear and anxiety. They always lead the people astray. This place. It isn't a utopia. 
If that's the real world. Bro, what the fuck? Then it can die alongside you. Literally, what? Like, what is this? I know that they can transform into archetypes, but like, I don't understand. They're like, they're hiding so much of this from us. Oh, was this another thing? Okay, no, they were showing um the press turn battle system here. And its light shines upon Lord Luisa's king. The wish's outcome is beyond your meddling now. I must clear my head of these fantasies. In the end, clinging to a dream will do me no good. Knowing all this, I shall claim the ideals you abandoned and finish. No, 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 no. I got it. Hit, hit me with that again. Hit me with that again. That music. That is. Peak showed oh Shoji Maguro, let's fucking go. I must clear my head of these fantasies. In the end, clinging to a dream will do me no good. <laughs> Knowing all this, I shall claim the ideals you abandoned and finish it. What does that remind me of? Is it strange journey? Is that strange journey, bro? Oh, let's fucking go. That was so good. Let me find this for you. I wanna show you. Also, welcome to whoever just joined. I just technically finished going through Metaphor, so just a heads up, but I am going to compare um, this real quick because I wanted to show you guys something for Trails because this game in particular, I think they've taken a little bit of reference from. Um, can I find Trails Battle? Gameplay, I think. Maybe this one. So they should show here, Isla. Do you see this? They introduce this first. If you're in the overworld and you go around... Let me turn that down a little tiny bit. If you're in the overworld and you want to fight an enemy and not have to deal with, like, turn-based, if you think you can handle it, you can kill an enemy in the overworld. But if you want to switch over, or if you see a key moment in the battle uh, where I believe... I believe the game will give you, like, a, like a little cue... You can swap over to turn-based, and you can get the advantage. This shit good. I really want to fucking get this game, too. This game is so, so good. Um, I ended up playing this, by the way. I played, I played the Japanese version of this. I got an English mod, and I managed to get, I think, to this point of the game, and it was peak. Peak turn-based gameplay. Shit was so good. We're waiting 84 years, 84 years for this game. And the music is so good too. I love this shit. Um, I think that's pretty much it. I just wanted to show you that because um, that's pretty much like what I saw for, for earlier. They were comparing it to. Um, I don't remember if there's anything else I really needed to, to look at for metaphor. Um... They've already shown everything that I think they, that they can show. I guess, honestly, at this point, it's really just discussion.